what is survey spectra in XPS and why we perform survey spectra. The main purpose of a survey spectra is to identify the type of elements exist in the sample. The survey spectra can also call different names. These are the key characteristics of a survey spectra. Finally, we will be talk about the key steps involved in a survey spectra. Let's discuss about survey spectra in XPS, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Why we perform survey spectra for the information? In XPS, we run two spectra. One is called survey spectra, Another one is called high resolution spectra, high resolution spectra. But I will not talk about this one here. I will only focus on survey spectra. Survey spectra is particularly important when we do not know the elements in the sample. For example, the element may be lead here, maybe cobalt, maybe oxygen, maybe zinc, but we do not know the elements. So we have to run the survey spectra. Let's see here what is written here. For example, we do not know whether the sample is correct or not and if somebody hand over to us the sample and we do not know about the coating process because XPS is a surface uh, technique so it will detect a lot of things. And what is the contamination level here? So survey spectra is basically the most critical step and starting point for identification of elements. And this is basically the first step to provide a quick overview of the elements present or absent on the sample surface. It is basically a rough estimations. The survey spectra is also sometimes called wide scan because uh, I will explain that we use wide range uh, binding energy here, wide range binding energy. So this is why it is called wide scan and it is low resolution. We are not resolving. I, I will explain that uh, in, in, in high resolution we just take uh, a small range for this binding energy for example if we just take uh, a six electron volt so when we zoom this so that has high resolution but this survey spectra is a low resolution and it is also we call broad scan because as I explained here we broadly want to know and also we, we call it overview spectrum so all these five names used for the similar purpose these are the key points about XPS survey spectra. This means the, what is the purpose basically? The purpose is basically, is basically to know the elemental identifications and the qualitative analysis. Qualitative means we are only interested to know the, the symbol. The symbol means what type of element? Lead, let's suppose uh, this is cobalt here, copper here, and this is basically uh, zinc here. So we just need uh, to know only the, uh, the symbol, the elements here. This is why we call qualitative analysis because we do not know that how much, uh, how many, but we only interested in symbols. So this is the main purpose and the energy range is basically, uh, is, as I explained it, wide here because we use two sources, one is aluminum, another is magnesium and the range is uh, in here in this range here. Uh, the resolution is lower here as I explained. The scan time is also shorter. You will see that for high resolution, we use uh, longer time for this. Is, this is very short time. And we get final data, we get just the identified elements in the sample. Now let's discuss the key steps involved in survey spectra. We use survey spectra for identification of elements. So once we have this survey spectra, so the first thing is to mark the peaks like this. This is one peak here. This is another peak here. This is another peak. This is another peak. There are many peaks. For simplicity, I just mark four peaks. And we can do this by origin. Now the second step is these peaks belong, correspond to the core level binding energy like this. Here you see this peak belongs to this binding energy, this peak belongs to this binding energy. Let's suppose this peak belongs to 900 electron volt here. And we can also do this by origin. Now in the third steps, just compare the binding energy in the step 2 with the binding tables. We have the binding tables and it is available online. And this binding table contains all elements binding energy except helium and hydrogens. So just compare 
the binding energy values from step 2 to this step this binding energy tables and just write those values here so actually these values are from binding energy table once we have these values so this means that in the binding energy tables these values belong to certain elements so now we are ready to identify the elements so now in step 4 as i mentioned that from binding energy tables we are able to identify the elements so now just give the names that this peak was from zinc and that peak was from oxygen and this peak from uh, carbon and these core electrons are photo electrons photo electron peaks we represent by element here and this is basically uh, represent n here and this piece basically represent basically orbitals or angular momentums so this is the representations of photoelectron peaks so now we assign most of xps peaks to certain elements and now we are ready to run for high resolution spectra